And we've been joined now from Aberdeen by the SNP's Deputy Leader, Stuart Hosey. Welcome back to the Daily Politics, Mr Hosey. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, if you'd won the referendum, you'd now be five months away from your uh, self-chosen Independence Day. You chose it for March of 2016. You had told us in the referendum and on the Scottish White Paper that oil revenues would be £8 billion in 2016-17, the latest forecast has them at 500 million. So from over 8 billion to 500 million. How would you be filling that 8 billion pound gap? We didn't win the referendum, Andrew. No. Don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. I, that bit I know. But if you had, how would you be filling the gap? We didn't win the referendum, Andrew. The don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. The gap that requires to be filled at the moment is at a UK level because every penny of oil and gas revenue ever has gone and still goes to the UK exchequer. I think more important than the hypothetical of what if we'd won is where are we now? You said $48 a barrel, the 52-week low is $40, the 52-week high is $92. The OBR are suggesting around $70 into the future, and both Sir Ian Wood and Jim McCall are suggesting a bounce back and a hardening of the price in the kind of 15 to 18 month time frame. Well, they seem quite optimistic to me. It's also the case that we heard in the package about the impact in Aberdeen. You know, the oil industry have taken measures to manage their own costs, so we need to support those. We need to continue to look at the tax regime, about expiration allowances doing everything we can to support an industry which has had a very difficult time with the softening of the price but look to it having a very healthy long-term future. Far more important, I think, for real people's jobs than the hypotheticals of what well, if would something different had happened last September. Well, except that that's what you campaigned on the future of our nation. And what I am trying to work no, out I, is whether no, you were campaigning on a false prospectus. Because you would have had a, if Andrew, you were, if you had won the referendum, you would be facing an eight billion pound gap, and you could only have filled it by either cutting spending by 14 percent, or raising taxes by 16 percent, or a combination of the two. What would you have done, Andrew? Every time I'm on this program, you seem to want to fight last year's referendum. Don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. The no side won. What we need to do is to support the industry now, uh, welcoming the reversal of the daft decision on the supplementary charge increase, looking at additional field allowances, trying to push for more exploration allowances, doing what the Scottish Government are doing in terms of apprenticeships to ensure the labour chain is maintained in the future and we don't suffer from labour shortages when the sector bounces back. I don't know why you want to fight last year's referendum all over I, again, I, I, Andrew. I don't, I don't want to, to find it. I'm, this trying, industry I'm and trying, Mr Hosey, to unpick what you told the Scottish people. And you told the Scottish people that there would be eight billion from oil revenues. Indeed, you said there'd be nine billion by your second year of independence. And I'm trying to work out what you would have done if you had won, or whether you actually campaigned on a false prospectus. No, Andrew, the oil forecasts we use, as you well know, were actually lower than those used by the UK government. No, no, they weren't, Mr. Hosey. That, I'm sorry, if Mr. You, Hosey. That is not if, true. The OBR forecast it is at the same time. Absolutely true. The OBR for, I've got it here. The OBR forecast at the time of the Scottish government white paper saying there'd be eight billion in revenues was four billion. It was half your forecast. Insolent bastard. I think. I think if you look at the business department, you'll find their oil price forecast was higher than the Scottish government's. I said the UK government, not the OBR. The government depends on OBR forecast, Mr Hosey. I think uh, you look at the UK government's figures, they were higher than the Scottish government's. The Scottish government figure was more conservative. But if you want to admit, or if you want me to admit, the Scottish government, the Yes campaign, the UK government, the OBR got the figures wrong, you're absolutely right. But you how just much got them more wrong than anybody else. If, if, Infant bastard. No, we didn't, and I've already explained that, and that is the wrong thing okay. to say. But how much better it would have been if we'd been able to take action to overturn the daft decision on the supplementary charge without having to wait months yeah. and months and months for the UK government to take a decision that everybody know needed to be taken in the first place.
let me come on to your government's own record in Scotland. Why have you barely increased health spending in Scotland since 2008? Health spending and revenue side has increased in real terms every year. It's about to hit 12 billion for the first time, and if we're re-elected, it will rise in real how, terms every year. How in much the next has it increased in well, real terms? How much has it increased in real terms every year, Mr. Hosey? I'd say that was rather less cordial than he was used to. Well, I, I don't have that figure, but okay, the well, I'll get, well, I, but, well, I do. is a real term. Well, increase. you've just claimed it, and I'll tell you. Health in 2008, just the year after you came to power in Scotland, was 11.7 billion in Scotland. By last year, it was 12.1 billion. This is in real terms. That's an increase of only 300 million pounds in real terms. It's peanuts and much less than the increase in England. Well, I have to say, given we have had a government subject to quite extraordinary cuts in revenue and capital from London. The fact we've been able to protect the NHS and deliver a real terms increase every year and a future real terms increase planned is a remarkable achievement given the pressure, the downward pressure by George well, Osborne on the Scottish budget. That's something we should be proud that we've managed to achieve, why should you not be something that should be dismissed why should you be proud? in a line. Why should you be proud, Mr Hosey? The English health budget over the past five years has risen in cash terms by 12%. You've only increased your health budget by 8%. Why are you lagging behind England? I think we're... Insolent bastard. Oh, well, we're not lagging behind England. We have a different health service. We fully maintained it. We've stopped the privatisation of it. We're not going ahead with the daft junior doctor's contracts. We've taken the private sector out of uh, cleaning our hospitals and reduced hospital-acquired infection by around 80%. We're seeing more patients than ever before. We've an increase to 137,000 employees in the NHS. This is a very strong record. Well, and better, I think, Andrew, to recognise the achievements than simply talk except, the NHS down. Except that in terms of uh, increased spending, health spending in Scotland is increasing less than it is in England. As a share of government spending in Scotland, health spending has been falling. It's been rising in England. And one of the consequences is that in terms of waiting time targets, you haven't hit them and the A&E since September 2009. You have missed for six years in a row. I'm leaving. I think you'll find that when the targets were met, the target was actually increased and strengthened. You haven't and met it since NHS, 2009. That's because we set an increased target, Andrew. But you a failed more to meet. Target. A better target. What? Yes, but the thing about these targets is you aim to get to them. You put the investment in, you increase the number of GPs and nurses and doctors and consultants, staff across the piece to constantly try to improve and challenging targets are set to do just that. Wrong! Let me uh, just take the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow, huge uh, hospital in Scotland's biggest city. Its uh, records show that it's now meeting waiting times for only 77% of patients, whereas the target's 98. It hasn't got the money, it is failing, and it hasn't got the money because you've not spent the money on health in Scotland. Voila! <laughs> Well, I dispute that, and I think it's completely well, you dispute wrong, the Queen Andrew, Elizabeth figures? To, pick it, to, to answer the fucking question. To t it's completely wrong, Andrew, to choose a single hospital and pretend that that is uh, instructive not, of the entire NHS. Not if you're in that hospital Across on a Friday NHS, night, it's not. Well, to pick one hospital and one but, busy Friday is an even more facile argument but, than looking at NHS the across the piece. I'm you not sure why you haven't hit the I'm target, not sure Mr. Why you're doing this, since Andrew. 2009. That's my point. I only pick one hospital to give that's you an example. Take every hospital you haven't hit the target. Well, that simply isn't the case. Well, it's it simply is. not the case to say not a single hospital has hit no, the target. No, no, I said take that the average of all the hospitals untrue. you haven't hit the target. Now, who can argue with that? Uh, Andrew, we set more difficult targets to drive up quality. All right. It was the right can thing I, to do. Can I just... Uh, I don't quite understand this, because in terms of as a share of public spending, health spending in England has risen in the past five years from 19% of total spending to 20%. 
Now, that increase, it's a 12% rise in cash. That's reflected in the Barnett formula that gets sent to you. You get a share of that increase. And yet you have chosen not to spend that increase in health. Well, You've cut the share of spending see, again, on health. Again, what, why did you do again, that? Andrew, I, again, Andrew, you're pretending there's been increases. The Scottish okay. budget has been cut across the enti entirety of the last parliament. And we're facing something in the order of 5.2% real terms cuts but, over this parliament. But Mr. To, choose, to choose a change in revenue in one department well, and pretend there's been an increase in the amount of money the Scottish Government has to spend simply isn't what correct. What could be more important than health, which is entirely under your control? And in terms of the share of health spending as a percentage of total public spending in Scotland, whereas it's risen in England, it's fallen from 18.3% in Scotland to 17.3%. You have been cutting health as a share of public spending. And I ask again, why it would is, you do it that? Is, it, is ex it is extraordinary. While there has been a real terms increase in health spending and resource spending across the Parliament, which you've conceded, you're now trying to suggest a real terms increase in health spending in Scotland is a cut. It's the wrong argument, Andrew. You're w I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why you're pretending the NHS is in crisis when it is not. I, I've you used need to accept, crisis. as you have, there's been there's been a real terms increase in NHS revenue spending and that was the right thing to do. You're proud of a real terms rise of three of a paltry £300 million over six years. Works out at £50 million quid a year in a budget of £11.7 billion. I think when we take the budget, we increase it each year, we end up spending £12 billion for the first time on the NHS in Scotland, when people are incredibly satisfied with the service they get. Really? To have it talked down in such an abstract <laughs> way is a bizarre approach to be taking. Okay. It wasn't abstract, Mr Jose. He was using the figures of your own Scottish Government. These are the official figures. But we better leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your time in Aberdeen. I didn't like him anyway. He wasn't right in the hat. <laughs>